Welcome to the video series, How to Build Your Food Truck, with me, Frank Valtieres. Once again, we're here finishing up some last details that we have on this particular food truck build that we've been doing. We've been taking it from A to Z, all the way from an empty plywood trailer. And now look at it, it's almost like a full kitchen on wheels. Don't mind all the mess that we have there. Just as, as I said, wrapping up a few things and I wanted to keep you in the loop because every video that I put here on YouTube for you guys to be able to uh, do your dream of building your own food truck or trailer, I do it as I'm doing the work. So if you see me doing it, it's because I'm literally doing it and it's almost like real time. Obviously there's a little bit of delay between when I upload it in here, but it's like almost like, like if you guys are watching me, it's like you guys are there with me building this trailer. Um, one thing that I have been wanting to do because I, I almost lost this the other day, I actually found it in my yard and I was like, where the heck is my control for my rope lights? Uh, these are the ones that I bought. I bought it on, on Home Depot. Uh, I don't even know, they used to have them in stock. Now they don't have them in stock. I like this. The only thing is that it has a control and it's good and bad, right? There's good things and bad things about it. I don't even know if it's Wi-Fi that you can connect it to like your phone through your app, but I know it has this control. And if you lose it, you can always reprogram another one. However, you don't want to lose it. And I want to attach it like right here above my switch. So it always has this little place in the trailer. That way it doesn't move, which typically you wouldn't move it. So I bought these command strips, really simple stuff, right? And I'm just going to attach it to the back, to the front and put it on there. And then I'm going to show you some things that I've been working on. I'm going to attach these two tables that you see right here, these two five foot tables. I'll tell you a little bit about them right now, as well as my dish rack, a uh, little upside down shelf that I have over there, knife holder, all that fun stuff. So let's get started. Once again, Frank Valtieres on how to build your food truck, where we take it from A to Z, everything that you need to know on how you can build your own food truck from scratch, and then you can have it out in the in the field right serving up your your concoctions that you have your cupcakes your burgers your barbecue your uh smoothies my daughter told me the other day that we should do like those uh those little drinks with the balls in them i don't even know what they're called um they're, they're expensive as crap right <laughs> those right there with the little uh the the tea and then and, and whatever the brown sugar and i was like huh interesting idea but uh, anyways, let's get started right away. Drop your comments or questions in the comments and I answer each and every one myself. So let's get started right away. Frank Baltieres, how to build your food truck. This next part that we're gonna be working on is installing the table right here, the concession table, or we could call it the condiment table. That's right here. I bought it right when I bought my window. So I buy them almost as like a package deal. They price them individually, but it's better to just buy them at the same time. Uh, I buy it just a little bit bigger than the window. I'm going to show you how it looks on my trailer. Let me go over there and then you guys can see. But that's what we're going to be installing today. Just got to take a few measurements. It's almost like a copycat of the other one. But let me show you how I have it on mine. Here you go. So you can get a better visual. It's this little thing right here. And what happens is when obviously you have your window open, you can just flip that bad boy up. And it has these legs. All of it come together in like a kit from JR Aluminum. That's where I bought it because that's where I bought my window. Do not ask, do I know, know any other place to buy one? Because I do not. I've only bought them from JR Aluminum and they've been wonderful. But that's what we're going to be installing right now. When you order your window, try to also order your concession tray here. That way you cut down on some lead time. What I try to do is add three inches to the left, three inches to the right. So whatever your window opening is, just add six inches and then that'll cover you on the left and the right. That way you get a nice little overhang. Um, the other one is that they do give you the hardware to install the window from JR Aluminum. You can use it to install it to your uh, trailer studs or your truck studs. The other way is to drill all the way across the trailer and then buy a threaded screw and then put a bolt and a washer on the other side of the trailer on the inside. And that to me, I like that better. But securing it to your studs of your trailer and truck, that works just as great i'm gonna jump around on this video really fast because i wanted to show you this because i wanted to install this today this is a pro, uh, propane changeover regulator that i have in the front a high capacity one made by fairview and i want to install my two braided hoses this is a 15 inch stainless steel braided hose 
there's different lengths you can buy i like the 15 inch because it gives it a nice just a nice little wrap right here where you don't have a actually this this thing's going to be flipped like that where you don't have like a big loop of this braided hose on here so it's up to you whatever length you want to buy but i like the 15 inch ones and another thing that i didn't know was like a thing on these hoses there's two different types of end, ends to it this is i believe an inverted one and you have to buy the specific one for the regulator that you have so i'll link this in the description just know that there's two different types of hoses that you can purchase but i'll link this one specifically in the description two very cool things that i like to add to the food truck or the trailer is one of them is this one it's a wall shelf and I put this towards the front because I put all my spatulas and all that fun stuff that you need, like cooking utensils. So it's a really cool place to hang your stuff in the wall shelf right there. The other thing that I install, well actually it'd be three things then, is this knife holder. It's a little magnetic knife holder. This one's 18 inches. And I put this towards like where the cooking equipment is right here, where the warming rack is. So that's another thing. The third is this shelf. This one is a 12 by 24 and what I like about this one is if you flip it upside down you put the legs instead of like being reversed if you flip it upside down then you can use it almost as storage because it has the lip and as we're moving with food trucks and trailers then you can keep stuff in there and it's it doesn't slide right off so those are three cool things that I use in the food truck and then down here towards where the benches are is where the concession window side is. I do add a couple of things. One is a ticket holder right there. I'm gonna add a speed rail right there. I do have it. I just need to bring it in from the garage. These are my two work tables or prep tables, whatever you wanna call it. Right here I use food bins and I use bolts and uh, nuts to connect that with little washers. So I'm gonna show you how to put those in. And that's the flex line that I use for my propane. It's the uh, home flex three quarter inch from Home Depot. What else do I have on this side that I can show you? Oh yeah, right here. This is my towel dispenser that I have found. I have used many others and this one's not bad. I'm trying this one out next. I do have the other ones where you kind of pull the towels down here. Kind of annoying, I didn't like it too much. So I'm using this. So this is what we use on here. It's number 12 stainless steel screws, one inch long. I do have to add one more right there, but that's how we secure it to the wall. So now let's talk work tables. This is almost like the last pieces of the puzzle when it comes to like your food truck build. You want to get the right ones because in, in food trucks, real estate is like the biggest commodity that we have. So you want to maximize every square inch that you have here. And the best work table that I have found for me, uh, maybe it's different for you, but for me, it's been 18 inches from back to front. Uh, that has been a perfect dimension. You don't want to get too wide because it, it goes into your working aisle. And if you have a couple people in here, you guys are going to be like bumping all the time. And already you're like, your aisle is kind of small here. And uh, this is a seven foot wide trailer. So obviously if you have an eight foot wide, eight and a half foot wide trailer, then you have a lot more space. That, that foot makes a huge difference in here of the width. I don't like the eight footers personally. I like the sevens, but again, that's just a personal preference. It's easier to tow a seven footer, I think, <laughs> and to back it up. You don't need those big monster mirrors on the outside of your truck. But I buy uh, Advanced Tapco stainless steel tables. This is stainless steel on the bottom and on the top. They do make some that are, I believe they call them galvanized, almost galvanized. Um, and they do, they do not allow those in my health department. So I have to buy stainless steel tops and bottoms. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Obviously, it's a little bit more pricey because it is stainless steel, the whole thing. I buy, as I said, 18 inches from back to front, 5 feet from left to right. So 5 feet in, in length. And I buy 5 footers because shipping, if you really find it, can be free. If you go to 6 foot, 7 foot, then you have to pay for shipping. Why? Obviously, maybe it's just it's a bigger thing to ship. These things are heavy. <laughs> they are heavy, though. So make sure that... You buy those adequately. As I said, I buy two five footers. I connect them together with bolts and screws and nuts right in the middle over there. And uh, that makes a 10 foot table. So it's 18 inches by 10 feet is what I ultimately have here. Uh, and, and when I bought these, they were about, my gosh, 200 bucks, 250 bucks, right around there, give or take. Don't quote me on that. But uh, 
I cannot tell you where to find them. I just literally Googled. These are Advanced Tapco, and they also make a brand called Regency. I think that one you can find on Websterrant, and it's the same thing, 18 inches from back to front. The only difference is, you see how this one has a rounded nose? Regency has a flat front, which can be pretty nice, actually. Uh, they were just a little bit more expensive for me, and I didn't want to spend that much money um, because, every, like I said, every little bit counts, and we're always trying to, to scrounge up as much as we can, so I feel you on that one. But again, how we attach this is pretty pretty straightforward. On here, on the back, you want to drill a pilot hole with your drill bit. So you want to drill a pilot hole back here on four different spots is what I do. And then I use a number 12 stainless steel screw. As you can see here, it's number 12 by one inch. And that attaches to the wall. So I'm going to drill into the wall. And one inch is perfect because it doesn't go to the outside skin and it gives it enough hold where as you're driving, nothing can happen. And the other part is you want to add flange feet. You can see down here, they do not come installed with flange feet. So you want to buy those as well. And that, that way you can secure it from the bottom. And I use the same type of screws, number 12 by one inch stainless steel screws. Found these at Home Depot or uh, maybe I'll find them in Amazon. I'll link them here in the description for you guys to, to buy as well and make it easy for you. Again, that's how I secure my tables. These are the work tables by Advanced Tapco. TTS 185, I believe, is a model number. Again, uh, Regency makes another product similar, just the front is a little bit different, but these have been perfectly for what I need. Uh, and then the flange feet is something that you, you do need. That way these things are not moving when you're driving, you hit a pothole, <laughs> everything bounces around. So I wanted to give you the update on the work table. Again, I'm gonna drill with my drill bit here, a hole right in, and then we'll secure with the screw. So let's get to it right away. If you're using the FRP, a quick tip is you wanna make sure that you drill just a little bit of the FRP because it can um, kind of splinters a little bit. FRP is a little bit more delicate than what I thought than stainless steel. So make sure that you give it just a little bit from the drill bit to uh, give you enough clearance to put that screw in there. That way you don't crack it. That's exactly what I was looking for. You don't crack the FRP. To get into those hard places, this right angle attachment, whoo, man, this thing is a lifesaver. Also, this is that 24 inch speed rail that I'll be using on this food truck. Before I end this video for today, I wanna show you how I install these uh, fancy little storage bins that I have. I actually came up with these because I was looking for ways on how to put usable storage down here, especially with food trucks, everything's moving around. You just can't put a bin, right? Like this and expect it to stay while you're moving, right? And nobody wants to take these off every single time you move your truck or trailer. So what I did is, number one, these are NSF rated, just so you know, they're made by choice. These are 12 by 18 by nine. And then this one's 12 by 18 by six. So they're NSF rated, as you can see right there, so you can show your health department. What I put down here, these aren't attached yet, just so you know. These are number eight by three quarter stainless steel uh, machine screws, as you can see right there. Number eight by 32 by three quarter inch. And then you just attach it right there. You just drill right through. See, this one's attached. So it doesn't move when you're driving. And I literally use this for everything. I put a lot of stuff inside right here. Um, you can put your oil if you use oil. Uh, your, I put my clover machine down in there as well. Uh, your receipt tape, you know, that you have. Literally, you name it, you put it down there. So it's really, really nice storage that you have. And I also put one down here where I have the food warmer by Cotrite. I put one down there as well. Works wonderful. So there you go, guys. That's how I end the video, how I attach these food container bins. As you can see, I'm going to do it to this one. Just... I drill a hole right there, and then I put number eight screws, 832 by three quarter inch stainless steel. Make sure they're stainless steel, and then I attach them like that, and that is how we do it. Any questions, again, drop them in the comments. Frank Baltieres, How to Build a Food Truck. We'll see you later. Thanks again for subscribing to the channel, watching the videos, sharing them, and also, I believe that you can build this food truck by yourself, so follow along, and we're gonna get it done together.